Uh, in this lecture, I will talk to you about the baseline, or it's also called the offset. Uh, and this is a signal when the signal from the calorimeter when there is no heat produced, no thermal power, zero thermal power. Then we have the baseline. And this is uh, sometimes an extremely important parameter to know. In other cases, it's not so important. Um, and before I talk more about the baseline, I would like to say that if you have a commercial calorimeter, it can be more like a push button instrument. You charge your sample and push a button, and you get a result after a few hours. The baseline and the calibration coefficients and other corrections are are done automatically inside the instrument. So even if you have, but even if you have such an instrument, it's good to know what the baseline is, how to determine it, what the calibration coefficient is, and how you can determine it. Because if you don't know what actually goes on inside your instrument, you may have difficulties in evaluating your experiments, and you may not know if the measurement was good or not. Or you can actually make mistakes. Uh, so it's always good to know what sort of goes on inside the inside an instrument. Uh, in some cases, it's very important to have a baseline. I will show you uh, one such case here. It's uh, similar to the cement reactions I showed you earlier, but this is a reaction of, uh, it's a simpler reaction, with calcium sulfate hemihydrate that reacts with water to form calcium sulfate dihydrate, which is uh, also called gypsum. So it's a gypsum or plaster of Paris reaction. Um, and uh, the same thermal power as a function of time, and we see that we have an initially constant value, the thermal power, and then it increases and it peaks and then it goes down to the same value again. And, uh, the value of thermal power here and here is actually zero. So this is the baseline. In this, this reaction is retarded. So it's not only calcium sulfate, hemihydrate, and water, it's also retarded. It doesn't start until after half an hour, an hour. So here, nothing is happening. So here we have a baseline. So in the measurement itself, we have a baseline. This is zero. And we also see that, that after, the, after the reaction is taking place, when it's finished, we come to the same level, which is the baseline. Now I will draw the same uh, curve here on the board. something like that. Uh, and now we'll add some nomenclature here, uh, or symbols, P and Q. So thermal power is P and the heat is Q. So what we measure here is P. And here we have the time. Uh, now, the first part here is a baseline. And the last part here also, when the reaction has taken place, when it's finished, is also a baseline. And uh, draw a line like that, which is not perfectly horizontal here, but it's uh, in the real case actually perfectly horizontal. Then we have the heat here. The area here, the integral, is the heat. So if we want to evaluate how much heat this reaction produced, we need to know the baseline and then make the integration of the peak over the baseline. So in this case, it's very important to know the baseline, but it's easy to take the baseline from the measurement. Uh, if we instead look at uh, the cement hydration that we looked at earlier, uh, there is no baseline to be found here, and there is no baseline to be found here. Uh, here there is no baseline because from the moment we add water and cement, the reaction stops, heat is produced. And we do that outside the calorimeter, then transfer the sample into the calorimeter. So when we start measuring here, uh, the reaction is already going, heat is produced. So there is no baseline here. And this is a very long-term reaction. It, uh, it, uh, actually concrete gets stronger even after a year or so, it can continues to get stronger. So this reaction almost never stops. So it's like not stopped here, and there is no, no baseline to be found here. So in, in this case, for the hydration measurement, we need to measure the baseline in a separate experiment. Uh, and I've actually done that. So in this case, zero here is zero thermal power. I have subtracted individual baseline values for each of these four curves. 
because these are measured in different uh, parameters uh, in a multi-channel instrument, and they have different baselines. So this has already been done here. So this is true thermal powers here. Uh, to measure these baselines, one would uh, charge the calorimeter with the ref reference materials in both the sample and reference position. So if you make a measurement, for example, the cement, hydrating cement paste, uh, and this, let's say you have 50 grams of water as a reference, then you would take, if you want to measure a base, baseline after the cement hydration measurement, you would take out the cement sample and put in 50 grams of water also in the sample cell. So you have 50 grams of water in each, in both the sample cell and the reference cell. Then it's perfectly balanced, and then you would measure for 24 hours or maybe over a weekend, and then you get a good value of the baseline. Uh, to measure good values of baselines, one should measure for quite a long time, at least 24 hours, because when you put things into the calorimeter, there can be some initial disturbances. Uh, so measure at least for one day. On the other hand, uh, baselines are usually very stable, so you don't need to measure baselines every time you do a measurement. I will come back to that later, how often you should calibrate and measure baselines. Uh, the case where you need to measure baselines if, if you change temperature, because when you change temperature, baselines usually change quite a lot. And also if you move the calorimeter from one room to another room, for example, you just disturb it, or maybe there's a power failure, so it can be good to measure the baseline, if you need to know the baseline. In this measurement, if you're only interested in, for example, at what time is the maximum thermal power, for the blue curve is here, about 10 hours. You don't need to do the baseline. In that case, the important thing is to know that time zero is actually time zero of the reaction, which in this case is when you add the, the water to the cement. I can say that time zero here uh, is the time baseline. So that's the only, this is the important scale here. That scale is not so important in that case. So it depends on what you're after. But if you want to integrate curves, like in the previous case here, then you need to do, know the, the correct baseline. And if, now B here is the obviously the correct baseline, if I used A as a baseline and integrate it here, I would get far too much heat. And if I used C, I will only integrate the upper part of the pit and get too little heat. So, Obviously here, B is the correct baseline, and you have to know that baseline, integrate above that baseline to get the true heat of the reaction. Um, and, well, the reason, as we exaggerated here, uh, the offset or the baseline is far away from, from the end of the scale here, uh, but uh, the, there is no reason that you would get exactly zero from the instrument when there is no heat produced. Because of the electrical and thermal things inside the calorimeter, uh, you get something close to zero, but not exactly zero. So there is always the baseline, always a shift away from zero when there is no thermal power produced. So you always need to measure baseline if, if you need to use it. You can't just say that oh, it must be zero. There is, a, there is always a, an offset from the, from the zero value, even if, you, if it's exaggerated in this in this example here. Yes, so that was the baselines. Uh, and as I said, we should measure long baselines, long term, 24 hours at least, baselines. Very important. Uh, and in the next lecture, I will come to another parameter that's important. That's the calibration coefficient. You need the baseline and the calibration coefficient to evaluate most measurements.